Today, have you considered going underwater? Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and problem news with a distinctively Australian flavour. This is going to be a short but I think important post today. I've been having a number of conversations with people about property purchase decisions and we've been discussing some of the information sources that they should be considering. And there's one that's come up a few times now which I just want to draw your attention to and that is we have a lot of property down the coast and indeed a lot of very valuable property very close to the coastlines or indeed rivers or indeed the harbour. Now, now the question that's worth considering if you're purchasing in this area is what's the likelihood of sea level rises impacting properties that you're looking at close to the coast and in fact I had a particular conversation today which triggered me to make this post. So where do you go? Well the good news is that there is a site called Coastal Risk Australia that you can visit and get some quite valuable information. So I just want to spend a bit of time today talking about that particular website. Now here is a bit of background which says that the coastline in 2100 may look different Coastal Risk Australia has been developed to show you just that. It's an interactive map designed to show the community what may be happening in the year 2100. It uses Google Earth and 3D modelling and it uses this concept which is you start with the current high tide and then you have different levels of potential inundation. And of course the degree of inundation is going to be determined by all sorts of things including what happens to temperatures and many other factors too. But basically it comes down to three scenarios. The low scenario considers sea level rises in the context of a global agreement which would bring about dramatic reductions in global emissions that would have a median sea level rise of 0.44 metres by 2100. The medium scenario considers sea level rises where global emissions stabilise after 2100 and in this scenario the mean value of sea rises could be 0.54 metres and the high scenario is in line with recent global emissions and observations of sea level rise and that would translate to a sea level rise of 0.74 metres by 2100. Plus of course you've also got to take account of tides, in other words there is natural movement in sea level rises too. So let's look here at an example based around Lake Illawarra just south of Wollongong. So it is a bit vulnerable you'd think and the question is how vulnerable is it? Well let's have a look and I've turned on satellite tracking so that you can see some of the features. So the first thing to do is to look at the current day and there is very minor flooding but nothing significant. Then what we can do is to look at the future scenario. So let's start with the low scenario and again there really isn't that much change but if you go to the medium scenario then it starts to expand to a larger area that's based on a 0.54 meter median rise and the highest tide and then if you expand it to 0.74 there's further inundation. Now obviously this is looking a long way out so you could say well perhaps that isn't particularly concerning but bearing in mind that we will see gradual rises over the next few years it's important to understand which properties may be more directly impacted. 
chances are you could end up with a lower valuation for properties with a degree of inundation. Now all I'm saying is that as part of the investigations that you might do into particular areas, into particular properties, it is just worth thinking about sea level rise and what may happen. Bearing in mind, of course, we're looking a long way out. It may not be that serious. On the other hand, for some people buying with the idea of a long-term hold, it is worth considering. And of course, if you were going to consider selling later, the next purchaser may also ask similar questions. So it's good to know. I'll put a link below to the Coastal Risk Australia website. And I do recommend that if you are considering purchasing property around the coast, you go have a look. And just before I finish this post, I thought I'd just show you one other area. This is actually around the centre of Adelaide. And even today there is evidence of flooding at high tide. And if you overlay the highest scenario, quite large areas could also be at risk. So just a quick warning. If you are considering buying in low-lying areas close to water, it's worth checking this website. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.